Chapter 10, Beowulf Against Grendel's Mother. Down, down, down went Beowulf, deeper and deeper, and the water getting darker and darker. He thought he would never come to the bottom. Perhaps there was no bottom and he was falling into hell. Perhaps there was no way back. The water was foul, thick with blood and slime. The strange thing was that he could breathe the blood bubbles as they traveled past. They had a vile taste, but without them, he would never have found sufficient breath to go so deep. He swam on. Soon he was far beyond any depth where the sun had ever shone. He shut his eyes because it was blacker with them open. When Beowulf opened his eyes again, there was a gleam of light below him. He kicked his way toward it. It grew a ghostly green spot, bigger and bigger. Then it was all about him. It was alive, this light. It quivered, it throbbed. It came off the wings of huge moth-like creatures drifting and looping in the underwater current. The creatures seemed blind. They did not attack him, but the cloud of them was so thick that he had to hack a passage through with his sword. Their wings were flaking in the water, and some stuck to him, some word about him as he went on deeper into the pool. She was waiting. She made no noise. Her tentacle arms were a part of the sucking, obsequious water. Beowulf fell into them, as into a seaweed trap. They closed about him tenderly. For a moment he succumbed, seduced by the gentleness then struggling to free himself, he found he could not. He kicked, her grip tightened. She dragged him down. Beowulf experienced a few seconds of sheer panic. There was no escaping, none from these spongy, intangible fingers that pulled him on, on, irresistibly insistent, coaxing, maternal. He could drown this way. She could choke him. She could squeeze the life from him. His face turned blue. Stars swam and spun in his brain. Then he was gulping great lungfuls of air, air. She had dragged him into her den. The current loomed behind him, a liquid wall of black and green. Apparently by some freak or witchcraft, it could not penetrate here. The cave went back a long way. Her arms stretched all along it, alive like lichen. Slowly, she began to draw him down into the heart of the cave. Beowulf snatched at his sword. Its jewels were sticky from her vile embrace. It was difficult to hold. The hilt slipped in his hand. Nevertheless, he managed to swing at the tentacles that gripped him. The blade bounced off. Her skin was too rough and tough and scaly. He threw the sword away. It clattered against the wall. He could hear her laughter. Soft, malevolent, bloodthirsty. He tried to get a grip on the rock floor, drag his heels, dig in with his toes, anything, but it was so good, no good, no use. She kept on drawing him down into the dark, sucking at his skin, making kissing and swallowing noises, her arms winding and unwinding about him like sinewy, swollen snakes. Beowulf screamed with fright, and the scream saved him. It brought him to his senses. It reminded him what he must do if he was to not be destroyed. He stopped shaking. He ceased his struggling. He let himself go dead in her clammy grasp. Grendel's mother did not laugh now. She pulled him on more urgently. Some of his quiet strength communicated itself to her tem trembling touch and she sensed danger. But just what that danger was and the doom it held in store for her, she did not know until Beowulf began to speak, easily, boldly, in a voice that made the whole cave ring. Beowulf said, I am Beowulf, son of Ethgeo. I am Beowulf, the one sun seeker. I am Beowulf who killed Grendel. I did not fear the child of Cain. No more do I now fear you, who were once Cain's bride. No, nor would I fear the hideous Cain himself if he had not been punished with lightning for the deed he did with you. Listen, she evil, 
and I will tell you why this heart does not blush nor blanch at the wicked worst you can do. It is because I, Beowulf, know myself. It is because I hold a cane in me, but I do not let him out. That man is truly brave who, feeling fear, yet puts his fear to use and plucks new courage from the fear itself. That man is truly good who knows his own dark places. Grendel's mother still dragging him down, but slower now, much slower. Her arms were losing power over him. She could feel her magic going. Beowulf said, There is a power you are powerless against. That power is in me. You see it shining in the golden collar about my neck. You feel it creeping through your flesh, leaving you numb and cold. You think you hold me, she evil? But in truth, I hold you. So saying, he wound his square tip fingers firmly round one of the tentacles that gripped him. He felt the creature shudder as though suddenly touched by fire. Her arms continued to draw him down sluggishly. He was nearing the deepest part of the cave. He could make out the looming shape of her. He could see the eyes that glittered in her breasts. Beowulf stared into those terrible eyes. He did not blink or falter. His short sight helped him. His strong hands tightened about the slimy tentacle. Grendel's mother sighed. A fetid breath of air passed through the chamber. Now the Beowulf was so close to her, the smell of the sticky mother's milk was almost overwhelming. But he refused to be overwhelmed. He kept on tightening his grip. He kept on staring into the green, cowarding sea of her eyes. When he spoke again, he put an equal emphasis on each word so that it sounded like an incantation. He said, I am Beowulf, son of Beowulf. The monster's eyes went cloudy. He said, I am Beowulf, father of himself. The eyes were helpless. They flickered with sleep. He said, I am Beowulf, who am myself. The eyes shut. Sleep, said Beowulf softly. Sleep deep and never wake again. She slept. Gently, carefully, with a stroking softness that was nearly pity, Beowulf put his hands about her neck and strangled her. She did not fight. The tentacles went loose. They fell to the floor like useless ropes. Her body was melting. She was dead.